Hey, this is Eric Davis. I'm going to talk about Event Machine today. So, I wanted to see what I could do with Event, event Machine. It's kind of a network-based server toolkit. Um, it's supposed to use the evented model, which is going to help out in performance, but I just wanted to see what I could build with it, you know, once again, time boxing it to an hour. So, to get started, unlike last week, I decided let's try to do a little prototype, see, see if I can get the very most basic thing running. That way, if there's bugs or problems, I'd know really quickly and I can debug it you know, instead of doing like 100, 200 lines of code and then trying to figure out what, what was the problem. So, um, see here, I have two servers here. Simple is the one I started with, the prototype. Um, and here's actually the source for it, you know, Ruby Gems Event Machine. Um, the big part of Event Machine right here is this block, the Event Machine Run, and then Event Machine Start Server. That basically actually boots up the server and runs it. Uh, you can see right here, the last line is Reverser. That's actually calling my reverser class up here. And so basically that's all you need to kind of bootstrap an event machine uh, server there. And there's a post-it net, which is basically once the server is set up, it just runs this. And then receive data is what actually happens when a client sends a data. So you can see right here, it takes the data the client sent, strips it, which takes off the new line, reverses it, and then added a new line back on. So let's go ahead and try that real quick and I'll show you. So we'll just do Ruby, simple, and then running on the port, and then say Telnet, localhost, and then what port was it? 8080. Okay, so you see you got that ready there, and that ready is basically from this posted nit block. So we'll say hello, reverses it, versus reverse, you know, you can type in some random stuff and it oh, didn't reverse that, interesting. Oh yeah, it did, it just looks like it because I have A and J at the beginning. So that's all there is to it. Um, let's quit out of Telnet here. I can never remember how you do it the right way. There. Oops. And you can see here, the server is still running. Um, you know, network server, it's gonna run until you kill it. So got that prototype working um, in the blog post. I talk about a problem I ran into it. Basically, where it says start server here, I accidentally used the wrong API and made it a client instead of a server, which was just me reading the docs wrong. So after that, I decided to make um, the running log server. So basically the server, you're gonna connect to the server and be able to add a run and then you can list runs. And so. It's what, 158 lines of code. Um, I went, went into a little bit more detail in the blog post, but most of this code is actually the test. So I have embedded tests that start around line 67 here and go all the way to the end. And I'll show you how I actually did that. Um, so basically taking the command line arguments right here, running a little case off it. If the command line, first command line argument is start, I do the event machine run and start the server like normal. If it's not, which basically anything else, require a mini test and then run the tests. The nice thing is, is now I can go and really, really easily run the test for it. Or, does it start? I can basically start up the server and so have it run on the port. So the nice thing about that is you actually get to keep your implementation, which is you know the first what, 54 lines right here, along with your tests. And so if you want to change one, it's kind of the same file. You know, it's, it's going to be unmanageable in larger projects, you know, especially when you get a couple hundred lines of code because you're bouncing back and forth. But for small stuff or if you're doing things like with Sinatra, this kind of pattern is a pretty nice way to do it. Um, so the actual code, we have, there's basically three methods that I'm using here. Um, the main one is receive data, and that's what Event Machine is going to use when the client sends its data. And I'm just using a condition here. If the data matches list, then I'm going to run the basically the list API, otherwise I'm going to add the run. And so the list is just basically takes all your runs that you have stored and then just outputs them into a, a string and sends that to the client with the send data. Really, really simple. Um, add run from user is the API that they'll call when someone's trying to add a run. So it's just, you know, most of this right here is just data munging, just taking Got some default data, taking the data which is coming in as like a kind of a CSV where it's just comma separated, splitting it out, 
stripping all stuff, setting it to an array here, and then finally just running add run, which saves it as um, saves it as a hash to the, the list of runs, and then sends an OK. So I'll go ahead and run that and show you what it looks like. So start the server, and then I'll tell net, and if we do like an empty line, it'll say input error. Um, we can run the list, and we have no run, so nothing actually shows up. But if we want to add a run, I'm going to go ahead and just grab what I have in here, just because it's kind of annoying to type all this in. So basically, we have the date at the beginning, the how many miles or the distance, the total time, the pace, and then a comment. So we'll just send that in. It says OK. All right, so let's do another one, but let's change it. Nice and easy run at night. OK, so got that. Now if we run the list command again, we can see it lists our two different runs. And it kind of just formats it nice here. Got the first one we entered, the second one we entered. Fortunately, Telnet doesn't let you use read lines, so you can't go back up. But that's basically how it is. If we quit out of Telnet and reconnect, our runs, okay, the runs do disappear. And so the reason why is because all of the runs are just getting stored in an instance variable here. And so what it looks like is each kind of client connection is going to set up a new set of runs. And so that way, you know, you basically lose your data. It's, it's in memory and then it goes away when the client disconnects. Ideally, you'd want to save this to a file or a database or something else. But for the simple implementation, I just wanted to keep it you know, as short as I could. So that's Event Machine. Uh, it's pretty nice. The best part about it, like I said earlier, is my implementation is this module right here. You know, all this code. And then the actual Event Machine part is just this. So with very, very little work, I was able to take my full implementation of run log here and throw it into kind of a wrapper class like this and actually run tests on it without exposing all of the Event Machine interfaces. The only things I really had to do was stub out send data because that's the thing that you know my implementation is calling to send it to the client and for that actually a good way of doing this just have an instance variable store all that stuff as strings and then that way in my test I can actually go and assert on it so right here see I'm actually sending data in asserting that it's actually getting stored to the output buffer and it's it's a pretty nice implementation and I mean you can see right here, the tests are pretty fast. I mean, six tests, nine assertions, very, very fast. So that's Event Machine. It's pretty nice. I think it'd be really good for web services or if you're trying to kind of separate your app into a bunch of smaller apps. Um, there's, I don't know if they're called plugins, but there's a bunch of libraries you can use to kind of add support for SSH protocol or HTTP protocol or stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff you can build on it. So that's Event Machine. And once again, this is my hour-long tech learning. All right, take care.